So we've already seen the usefulness of having an orthogonal basis for something. Uh, given a basis that is not orthogonal, all the things that we've been doing with orthogonal projection or finding distances between um, a plane and a point, uh, we can't apply without an orthogonal basis. So the point of today's uh, discussion is to take a span, take a, a basis for a, a vector space, a subspace, and find an orthogonal basis that spans the same, the same subspace. Uh, and so the way that we're going to do this, uh, I'll try to uh, develop as we go along, and then uh, later on we'll actually put together an algorithm for this. So the point of this, uh, we have x1 and x2 in this example, 3, 6, 0, and 1, 2, 2. Uh, and what we want to find, we want to find um, two vectors, v1 and v2, such that v1 dot v2 is equal to 0. That will imply orthogonal. Uh, and also the span of v1, v2 is equal to the span of x1, x2. And so that's the whole point. A good place to start is v1 equals x1. So let's just let v1 equal x1. Um, and then we'll try to find um, a, an, a perpendicular vector to v1 uh, and in the span of x1, x2. Okay, and so the way that we've done this so far, if you think about it, we've been looking at orthogonal projection. So if I imagine that my tablet here uh, is a plane, so that the screen on your computer is a plane um, in three space. So your, your screen, your computer is living in the room that you're in. So uh, the setup that we have is some x2, uh, and we have v1, which is x1, uh, and we're letting this be a basis element for uh, or orthogonal basis. Uh, and so if we think about an orthogonal projection of x2 down to v1, so this will be x2 hat, uh, and the vector z that comes from this. So uh, in our orthogonal projections here, x2 is equal to x2 hat plus z. And now the property that z has is that it's orthogonal to v1. Uh, and again, if you think about the screen of your computer being a plane in three space, notice that z2 has, or z has not left the plane. Uh, in fact, uh, this implies that z is equal to x2 minus x2 hat, uh, which by the formula in a previous class, this is x2 minus uh, x2 dot x1 over uh, x1 dot x1, because remember, v1 uh, is equal to uh, x1. Uh, and this is times x1. And so this is a linear combination of x1 and x2. And so that implies that z is in the span of x1, x2. And so the whole point of this is now um, z is a perpendicular vector, and it still lives in the span of x1, x2. And so z will pick v2 to be z. OK, and so actually, this is true in general, right? This is for any two vectors. This is true. We didn't actually use what the vectors were here. Um, but now let's actually try uh, to do this. So uh, we'll look at uh, x2 hat. That's the projection of uh, x2 down to v1. And so that'll be x2 dot v1 over v1 dot v1 times v1. And so in this case, x2 is just the vector 1, 2, 3, dotted with the vector 3, 6, 0, divided by 3, 6, 0, dotted with itself. And this is times the vector 3, 6, 0. So this is just a scalar. Uh, and this is v1, which is equal to x1. So after some simplification, you should find out that this is actually 1 third times 3, 6, 0. And that's 1, 2, 0. And so uh, z will be equal to x2 minus x2 hat. 
x2 is 1, 2, 2, minus 1, 2, 0, and that's equal to 0, 0, 2. And so again, remember, this is by definition uh, in the span of x1, x2, uh, because this is just alpha times x1 for some alpha. And so this is something that lives in the span and uh, has the added benefit that 0, 0, 2 dotted with 3, 6, 0 is definitely equal to 0, and so this implies that it's perpendicular. And so v1, v2 equals 3, 6, 0. Zero zero two is a basis. It's an orthogonal basis, in fact, for W, which is the again the span of x one x two. So in the next example, we'll see how we can abstract this for now three vectors. Uh, but if all you're given is two vectors and you're looking at a, a basis uh, for the subspace spanned by them, uh, you can find an orthogonal basis by first just picking v1 to be one of the vectors. We could have picked v1 equals x2, like we did in class, um, or, uh, or v1 equals x1, which is a sensible choice too. Find the orthogonal projection of x2 onto v1, and then let z be the orthogonal component of x2 with respect to v1. That orthogonal component will be in the span of x1, x2, and also have the property that it's orthogonal to x1. Uh, 